China continued to pressure the WHO and other countries not to stop international travel from China. That meant that hundreds of thousands of persons left China after this virus was spread far outside of Wuhan. I believe that was a deliberate and conscious choice by the Chinese communist leadership because they did not want to see their relative power and standing in the world decline because this virus was contained within China. Maria, it's a scandal to me that we have trained so many of the Chinese Communist Party's brightest minds to go back to China to compete for our jobs, to take our business, and ultimately to steal our property and design weapons and other devices that can be used against the American people. So I think we need to take a very hard look at the visas that we give to Chinese nationals to come to the United States to study, especially at the postgraduate level in advanced scientific and technological fields. You know, if Chinese students okay. want to come here and study Shakespeare and the Federalist Papers, that's what they need to learn from America. They don't need to learn quantum computing and artificial intelligence from America. That was Senator Tom Cotton, clearly one of the most vile, racist people in, in the Senate, 100%, as you could probably see there. So the first part of that, I do not doubt that the Chinese government refused to close travel for very selfish reasons. I am not above criticizing the immensely oppressive Chinese government. But the conspiracy theory that they refused to close travel so other nations would get coronavirus is absurd. There is not evidence to back that up, and it doesn't really make any sense because that would have to be a very controlled effort, and there's no evidence that there was one. But Cotton can go on Fox News, get the old racists that consume that media to just blame Chinese people, blame other people, blame people who are not Americans, which is their tried and true playbook. And I'm sure it pulls very well with the base and frankly, with other you know, apolitical people who are looking for someone to blame. I understand that, but it's actually vile because the second part where he's talking about Chinese students, that's horrible. <laughs> and he really unmasked himself there when he was talking about Oh, they can come here to learn our Shakespeare. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, wait. Shakespeare is obviously not American. And it shows that it's not about borders at all. It's about whiteness. Shakespeare's our white culture. They can come here and take the white cultural aspect, which is far superior, obviously, is what uh, Cotton would say. It's disgusting. That's what Republican racist xenophobes believe, and they can take that back to China, but not the science. Oh, the science. As if Chinese people have no way to learn science in their country, as if they aren't way more advanced in many scientific and mathematical developments than the United States. It's just this fiction that Chinese students are coming here, taking all our knowledge and bringing it back there. Once again, this, this old school mentality about how you can contain things with borders, now, anyone who wants to come to our private institutions, I thought you were all about the free market and you don't believe in free college for everyone. Harvard, Yale, Stanford, they're private institutions and they can accept whoever they want to learn their knowledge and be a part of their graduate class. That's kind of how it works. And also what's egregious is this kind of rhetoric is really dangerous and is tangibly harming Asian Americans in the United States. Racism against Asian Americans has surged as the coronavirus sweeps the US, with reports of hate crimes averaging approximately 100 per day, according to Representative Judy Chu of California. Speaking live on MSNBC on Tuesday, Chu discussed the increase in assaults on Asians in the US over misinformation regarding the coronavirus. She confirmed at least 1,000 hate crimes incidents being reported against Asian Americans after the pandemic arrived stateside. And I'm not just taking that Congresswoman at her word, um, Thousands of hate crimes have been reported at other outlets, and that, that article was from a few weeks ago, and hate crimes have continued to increase. And it's directly because of rhetoric like this, and you have Lindsey Graham growing on, going on TV saying, I'm going to send a letter to China and tell them to shut down their disgusting, dirty markets. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the markets have to be better regulated. As if, as if the Republicans, if they were Chinese in that system, wouldn't be deregulating everything. <laughs> That's the cruel irony of it. And I mean, right. And, and the, the reason that people are eating food 
that isn't properly sanitized in these Chinese markets is because they're poor. So how about you fix that first? How about you write a letter to the Chinese government asking them to fix poverty? But no, then, then you know, they th th their stocks wouldn't go up on the companies that manufacture all of their goods in China. And then they have slave labor. They have not th nothing to say about the, the slave labor there. Nothing to say about that. That's perfectly fine. But blaming poor people for eating food that isn't sanitary and has caused potentially this pandemic, that's right up. That's what right up Republicans alley. So Tom Cotton obviously, obviously should be ashamed of himself.